That growth shows no sign of slowing down, according to e-commerce giant Alibaba. This year, sales hit a record $35 billion. That's more than last year. And in the U.S., cyber revenue is calculated in just nine hours. Of course, we have our own big shopping holiday as well, and basically everyone likes to shop. Earlier, we spoke to Yukon Huang, senior fellow studying China at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace tonight. Asked him what these record-breaking sales in China's Singles Day mean for the country's transition into a domestic consumption economy. I think this illustrates that China is unique. It's got the huge market. It's growing rapidly. You get these new kinds of efforts to reach out to them through the Internet, and you have the largest one-day buying through the Internet that the world has ever seen. Someone's buying a 13-carat diamond, willing to pay tens of millions of dollars for such a privilege, and then there are small households buying a couple hundred dollars. In the end, you get this billion-dollar sales day, which is a record. So, so basically, the Chinese have, uh, have adopted this uh, sort of buying power that we see around the world. And a lot of it has to come back with the working class becoming the middle class, the middle class becoming the upper class. All of this is part of the government strategy to sort of increase the, the number of people that are able to consume, which has been a priority for China. Is everything working as scheduled? I, I think so. I mean, the world tends to think sometimes that in China, consumption is repressed. There are all these stories about consumption of share of GDP so low. What they don't realize is that consumption, household consumption, these individuals, Growth of consumption has been increasing multiples faster than any country in the world, around 9% in real terms per annum. Here in the United States, you see consumption growing by 1, 1 to 2%. 2% is very good, 1% is disappointing. But in China, you're talking about 9%. But it could continue. And this, I think, the third plenum, the reforms they have in mind, is to try to keep it going. When it comes up, is this basically the equivalent of the start of the, 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 sort of the shopping season, if you will, at least for the winter? I think they're learning in China. You got the Spring Festival a couple of months away. They try to test out something in advance. It's much more successful than they ever imagined. Uh, my worry is actually they're going to have one of these every single month now. This weekend, uh, there's obviously a very big meeting happening in Beijing. Mm -hmm. A lot of expectations on what reforms might be announced regarding social and economic issues. In the next 24 to 48 hours, we will get a communique from Beijing as to what the outcome is or what the agreements might be. What do you expect? The priorities have been known for a long time. Many of them were in the 12th five-year plan. They were actually in the last plenum. So what people are looking for, are they willing to act on some of these? I think they will. They're being forced to in some ways. What is the market concerned about? The market's concerned really about one major issue, the huge debt buildup, these local authorities borrowing so much. They're build, using the money to develop urban land which can't be sold. It's a downward spiral. So they want to see something that will control this. That was Yukon Huang, senior fellow studying China at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace.